so much trauma. Thanks, buddy. Okay, I want to say one division episode 8 next to Avengers Endgame is easily one of the best times I've ever had writing one of these essays because like Endgame it's a story about going back in time and assembling new meaning for use in the present. Therefore not only does the trauma stuff write itself but everything fits together to create a rather beautiful metaphor for the process of recovery because it's all about appropriating pain. Subsequently, before I begin, it's also important for me to clearly define the nature of memory and its role within our psychology. Let's start there. Memories are effectively units of meaning that composes our identity. They're like bricks in a Lego set or scenes in a movie for the reason that when they fit together, then as individuals, we have the capacity to understand who we are, review the past, and imagine a future. In other words, we have a consistent story to feel safe in. But what is grief? if not love, persevering. As Emily Keatley and Michael Pickering said, because of course I am, the remembering subject engages imaginatively with what is retained from the past and moving across time, continuously rearranges the hodgepodge of experience into relatively coherent narrative structures. The varied elements of what is carried forward being given meaning by becoming employed into a discernible sequential pattern. It is that pattern which is central to the definition of who we are and how we have changed. We both do. Trauma is effectively when this pattern is broken and the individual is forced to live with missing scenes that are way too painful to access. Therefore, trauma causes you to lose your sense of consistency and your life is unconsciously directed backwards from all the feelings of impotence. I don't know how I did it. WandaVision Episode 8 depicts this process quite literally, with Wanda travelling through her painful corrupted memories to gain access to a long forgotten pattern locked inside her. This is an episode effectively all about healing and restoring such pattern. Episode 8 opens in Salem 1693, where Agatha Harkness is led to her execution by her mother for dealing in dark magic. You practice the darkest of magic! But she overwhelms and kills everyone. However, moments before, Agatha tries to persuade everyone that she could be good. I can be good. No, you cannot. While holding the upper hand. Therefore, Agatha is reintroduced as an opportunist, motivated by power with no real faith or loyalty to her family. Afterwards, the episode then jumps back into the present. Wanda is held captive and it's revealed that her uncontrollable powers aren't sci-fi based but magic. Therefore, Agatha had sent Fox Pietro to interrogate Wanda because A. MCU Pietro wasn't available for necromancy and B. To figure out how Wanda is unconsciously transforming Westview. Waiting for you to reveal your true self. I got close with fake Pietro. Pietro, if you will. What happened to your accent? What happened to yours? Details are fuzzy, man. I got shot like a chump in the street for no reason at all, and next thing I know, I heard you calling me. So, my Agatha social experiment theory is completely thrown out the window. Instead, she's seemingly interested in only understanding and harnessing Wanda's powers. What's your secret, sister? Thus, like how she tried to bargain with her mother while holding the upper hand, she had been deploying a similar technique on Wanda this whole time. Do you want me to take that again? However, Wanda doesn't actually have any answers because they're locked away in her mind, which feels like an endless nothingness. As a response, Agatha uses the twins to force Wanda to travel back into her mind. So despite being the antagonist, Agatha is effectively Wanda's therapist. She even says, I tried to be gentle, to nudge you awake from this ridiculous fantasy, that you would rather fall apart than face your truth. Which echoes Monica's guidance from the previous episode. Wait, I, I can't control this pain anymore and I don't think I want to because it's my truth. The first memory is set in a tiny apartment in Sokovia. Wanda's father sells American media, so I'm completely wrong about the sitcom originating from Vision's mind. I'm 
sad trombone music. Moving on, in order to see the past, Wanda has to reperform it, kind of like in Assassin's Creed. And a defining trait in Wanda's memory is her love of sitcoms. She always picked which one to watch. Season 2, episode 21. She passionately explains the logic of the genre to her brother. What the shenanigan again? Shenanigan is like a problem, but more silly than scary, but can sometimes be a little scary. And when the family unit is depicted, she associates them with herself and her parents. Therefore, the world of the sitcom gave her a sense of continuity and identity to trust in, if you will. However, the stock bomb then drops. It's got the same sound as the toaster, and during the night, Wanda perseveres by maintaining her attention on the TV. So whatever happens, the continuity of the TV remained. By the end of the episode, you realize it was all a bad dream. And if it was real. Furthermore, Agatha reveals that Wanda had used a probability hex, which indicates that she had powers way before the Hydra experiments. So, uh, mutants, if you will. Agatha also says, But it's good medicine, Angel. The only way forward is bad. Which is fairly good advice, so there's a good chance that Agatha might be redeemed by the end of this. I'm just thinking too deeply into this. The second memory is Wanda's experience with Hydra, and it's revealed that every other test subject had died. Not one subject has survived direct contact. Therefore, Wanda and Pietro's survival were linked to the same pre-existing physical conditions. So again, mutants, if you will. Wanda got up close and personal with an infinity stone that amplified what otherwise would have died on the vine. The broken pieces of you are adding up, Buttercup. I have a theory. Afterwards, Wanda sits in a prison-like room with the TV, and once again, her identification with the screen is a continuity that perseveres. The third memory is set in the Avengers compound shortly after Pietro's death. Wanda invites Vision to watch TV with her, and like with Pietro, there's a familiar dynamic where she explains the tonal logic of the sitcom to him. No, he's not really injured. Ah, how can you be certain? It's not that kind of show. However, Vision can also read her grief, but she refuses to talk about it. It's just like this wave washing over me again and again. It knocks me down, and when I try to stand up, it just comes for me again. Therefore, even before Vision's death, Wanda always had a feeling of accepted impotence because her memories are so unresolved. Nevertheless, Vision offers a message of perseverance that begins to heal her mind. So as Vision learns from Wanda the complexity of human behavior, she learns to appreciate life as he does. I've never experienced loss because I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief? if not love, persevering. They permit each other to change. In the final memory, Wanda finally has her run-in with S.W.O.R.D. She wants a funeral for Vision, and Haywood surprisingly acts with respect. It's an honor to meet you, truly. Although he does refer to Vision as it, so there's still a dismissive undertone to him. Because you asked to see it. Which is expanded upon when he lies to Wanda to her face. Vision's not a weapon, you can't do this. In fact, it is our legal and ethical obligation. But that's in direct violation of Section 36B of the Sokovia Accords. And the Vision's own living will. He also plants the idea of resurrecting him into Wanda's mind because he himself had lost someone too. Not everyone has the kind of power that could bring their soulmate back online. However, in a real twist of events, Wanda leaves peacefully. She touches Vision's head, feels nothing. Tell me what you feel. I just feel you. and accepts that it's over. As a result, Haywood's story was a total lie. He may have been trying to cover up the fact that there were actually two visions this whole time. The program is tracking the decay signature of vibranium. Wait, why is Hayward tracking vision? Wanda is then invited to Westview through Vision's old letter, where he shows where he wanted to grow old with her. And with a moment of uncontrolled pain, Wanda releases her grief, creating the house, transforming the town, and bringing forth a new vision, which explains why he identified himself as a new being in the last episodes, and why he also has no memory and why he can't leave. His first words are, Welcome home. Symbolizing that the continuity of the TV remains. 
Consequently, after all of this memory stuff happens, Wanda's revelation now frees her to see how artificially staged everything is, and Agatha sees Wanda in the same way her mother saw her, with fear and frustration. So the whole thing kind of goes full circle. You have no idea how dangerous you are. Subsequently, within the mid credit scene, Hayward uses the Wanda-infected drone to power a new white vision. So, either the two visions will merge, or one will die. We'll have to see. Back to the monomyth for a second. This episode is knee-deep in Act 3, which began with the theme of contact, then communication, and now reconciliation. Therefore, I would argue episode 8 philosophically captures stage 16, the master of the two worlds, where the hero transcends who they are by achieving a level of balance between the inner and the outer world. Paraphrase from page 196. This is symbolized by Wanda's act of remembering, because through it, she travels between the two worlds of the painful past and the present. So by crossing back and forth, she learns the distinction between fiction and reality. For the majority of Wanda's life, she was someone that was subtly buried more and more by unprocessed grief, and what both alleviated it and exacerbated it was the TV. The four memories are all subtly centered around the growing influence of the TV. The TV once gave Wanda a shared activity with her family, so when she's alone, it's a substitute for human connection, and when she experiences it with vision, he restores that missing feeling. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, it was funny. Therefore, when Wanda changed Westview, it was her unconsciously restoring that continuity of the TV. Should we stay in tonight? As a result, this episode shows us that the trauma of the bomb had turned Wanda's entire life and identity into a story of escape, and it's through this theme that she never developed the resilience to process her painful experiences. This episode is deeply sad, but it's also deeply optimistic, because Wanda is now finally prepared to make a change, to produce a new identity herself. So ironically, she's finally escaped. Scarlet Witch.